Hi guys, so it's been a couple weeks since I posted some videos. Um, kind of missed posting up videos for you guys. Um, been kind of pressed with um, working on the book and getting some things done. Um, it's been it's been really exciting actually getting this book done. I think it's going to be great. Things you guys you guys are going to really love it. Um, really put a lot of work in it, and um, you know, I'll keep you guys updated when it's time to really share it with you. But I think what I'm going to be doing. Um, perhaps in the next few weeks, I'll share some samples with you so you can get a feel for what it will be like. All right. Um, now, in this video, I wanted to discuss with you guys. Uh, well, just share some tips with you on how to use a brush pen to do like people sketching, gesture drawings, and so on. I mean, of course, you can use it to do virtually draw anything, sketch anything, really. But um, I'm going to give you some tips on sketching people or doing gesture drawings and so on. Um, now, I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with the brush pen, but it's essentially like um, having a pen with a brush type point. See, it's, it's a little flexible. See, if you notice it, it gives, see that? So it's really flexible. And it's almost like using um, a brush in pen form. See, so, so you could actually emulate the or um, simulate the same effects with this pen with this brush. Okay? And of course, as with a brush, you know, it gives you the flexibility of making thin marks or thicker marks, all right? So you can make bold lines, thin lines um, just by varying the amount of pressure that you put on this. So it's pretty cool. Um, now, as opposed to like say for example, these see if I have them. Yeah, these uh, gesture drawings that I did before, see this was done with a normal, you know, uh, technical drawing pen. So here, this is one of the Pigma Microns, and it pretty much just creates a consistent line. So, mm, that's another idea, I should do some drawings with the colored Pigma Microns. But see, these just create a consistent line. You can have line variation with these, but it's not much, see? It's not that much. However, with the uh, brush pen, you have a lot more variation. Now, to get the most out of this, okay, you have to, you know, take advantage of the features that it provides or the advantages that it gives you. Now, of course, the most obvious is the fact that with added pressure or decreasing pressure, you can change the line width. See that? Now, what does that mean? That means now you can move from making really fine details to making blocks of value. See, and that's pretty cool because it can make your drawings a lot more interesting. Okay, because now you can move from just creating simple details to blocking in areas instead of necessarily switching your pen. All right, and. Uh, also, I should share with you guys that there's a couple brands that make these. Um, I think virtually every brand that actually makes um, technical drawing pens, they carry some form of a brush pen. I find that I tend to like the Prismacolor brush pen for some reason. I'm not sure why. Well, hmm. I, I think a part of it has to do with the fact that uh, with others, the, um, the, the tip is a little bit too soft. And I like the fact that this has enough firmness to be able to create fine lines you know but at the same time just with added pressure I can start blocking in areas and it's, it's really cool now what does this enable you to do well it enables you to be able to um, create uh, local value or in, in, indicate or suggest or convey local value as well as being able to um, create uh, light and shadow patterns so for example say I'm gonna have um, uh, let's, uh, let's have a, a cone like that. All right. So we have two of them. And also, if you want to have finer lines, you tend to hold it a little bit more vertical, like this. It may not be the most comfortable for most people, but you'll tend to get the, the finest lines because basically, by uh, holding it vertical, you're having only the tip contact the paper and you're able to get the the finest line because the tip is the smallest and the more you slant it see the more of the point or the tip 
that's touching the surface of the paper so the lines are going to be a lot thicker and wider see and the thinner it is all right so say you have a cone like that now the thing is, it will take some getting used to but once you get a feel for it just try to be loose the key with getting the most fun out of using a brush pen is try not to be too technical or I mean if you want to be more technical you can do it in, in a variety of ways you can actually um, do a sketch with pencil or you may want to use say um, a regular you know drawing pen um, and then do something and then go over it so for example if I want this to be thinner then I may use a pen like this that would actually give me a thinner line then I would go over this with my brush pen but I think it's more fun more organic a process when you use your brush pen to create both the thin and thick lines you know so there's no discontinuity in the process it's just one flow with one instrument you know you're just going from thin to thick thin to thick thin to thick sometimes when you break that that process then you tend to it, it may throw you off a little bit all right and then the key with this it's kind of like uh, like with watercolor you know you have to get comfortable with making abstract shapes shapes that are not perfect shapes that are not necessarily um, always making sense to you you know like say for example like with this I'll show you what I mean like you have to focus more on the simple is more principle like you're you're focusing on just getting a feel see and that may be enough see as weird as it looks that may be enough you know, who knows this could be you know the tip of something or like um a spear headed something or whatever you know um, so the, the idea is you're focusing on capturing a sense of light and shadow or it could be local value or it could be a sheen something you know it's really cool but the cool thing is <clears throat> that I like using it most for is I like using it to create uh, like shadow shapes because the thing is um, when you look, especially when you look at subjects in harsh shadow, like if you look at someone and uh, say they're in, in, in noonday light, bright sunlight, and you'll notice that there are certain shadow shapes on their faces or something like that, it's really cool to use a pen like this to kind of capture that. Because you just draw, literally draw the shapes. You see what I mean? This is really cool. So, it is it natural to just draw shapes like this no it's kind of abstract it's kind of uncomfortable but you have to get used to doing that and that's how your gesture drawings will really take on a life of their own you know so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a series of um, of drawings here just to give you a feel of how I would actually or I would use it to just create just drawings or sketches of, of people um, and it can be virtually anything. And as I said, like for example, I'm going to show you how I could use it to create um, a local value. For example, say you have, um, all right, I'm going to sketch, let's say I'm going to sketch someone's uh, shirt. Uh, that's the shirt. And say that's the arm. And another thing is you can, you know, discontinue the line if you want. See that? I don't continue everything. So that's like someone sitting or something, you know. See, that's the leg. Um, let's say they're sitting on a bench or something. Um, that's the head. They're looking to the left. All right, that's the ear. And that's the hair. All right, the hair and the ear right here. All right. So how would I use this? Like, like for the hair, I'd color in the hair just like this. See that? And that's it. The shirt. Now I'm indicating that it's a, a dark shirt and light bottom. So I'll leave those little white areas, I'll leave that just like that. It's fine. It creates some uh, interest. You see I'm coloring here, here's indicating shadow under the leg. 
but here it's indicating local value. So it's a dark shirt, but shadow on the leg. And that's the versatility of a brush pen that's fun. You can use it to create local value, or you can use it to create um, light and shadow patterns. And that's the cool thing about it that you can play with back and forth. Like even if you're drawing a portrait, for example, you can, or face, you can focus on the value pattern. See what I'm doing here is I'm focusing on the it's a shadow of the eyes. See, you always use an M for the face, for the nose. See that? It's a wider M for the upper lip. See? And then the lower lip, and then there will be a chin. Right above the chin, it will be a shadow right there. See that? And you have a little face. Then you can do the side under the neck. You can have a neck project here. It will be shadow under the neck. <laughs> you see, so this is the cool thing about it. You know, you're just playing with suggestion. And even for here, you can just See how abstract it looks? You have to be okay with that. Just keep it playful. You know, don't be too uh, specific with everything. Just, just keep it really loose and playful. Let's keep doing some more for fun. But you know, the key is you can do it in a variety of ways. You can either fill it in or you can do an outline and fill it in. And I think it's good to just go with either way. Just play around with it. You know, sometimes you'll find that uh, shapes, you'll, you'll find that shapes will suggest themselves. But one of the advices I would give is that it's good to study from life. Life will give you lots of chances to study this. You know, it's like say for example you're looking at the moon, right? And you notice that there's a shadow. Just try to capture that shadow. It could be something like this. And that's it. You see what I mean? Um, and that's a cool thing with um, learning to draw like this. And you know what the good thing is also about drawing like this is that it will it will teach you how to uh, appreciate um, the fact that sometimes abstract shapes are important and you don't always have to uh, make complete sense of everything you see you know what I mean like you don't have not everything you see will, when you draw will always make sense you will just see an abstract shape and you have to allow that abstract shape to speak you know sometimes you, you only get the effect it's like um, I think I heard this this term uh, when I was watching a film once and it's like you can't see the picture while you are creating the picture. You have to complete it first and step back. You know what I'm saying? It's like imagine you're doing a large mural and if you're at the wall, when you're close to the wall or whatever the surface is, you can't see the work. You have to step away from it. And that's the thing sometimes with doing gesture drawings or uh, uh, capturing certain abstract shapes is the fact that while you're doing it, it will not make much sense because you're not seeing it. See? So you have to trust the feeling and then when you're done, you step away from it and absorb it or take it in you know what I mean and um, it just let it go if sometimes it will be off sometimes it will look like you know what the hell am I doing and sometimes it will just look really interesting it's like sometimes it's, it's even cool to play with little shapes like this it's like you know do little stuff like that and see what it suggests and then build from that it's a very cool practice see like this to me it looks like a guy someone's profile on the shoulder I'm not sure if you can see it 
See, it looks like someone is looking that way. And then I may just develop on that. Put an arm. Oh, look, someone's walking. See what I mean? That just kind of evolved from, from, from that. And you just leave it like that. You know, leave it. It's, it's really cool. I do this a lot. Like, I just create little, you know, fun shapes like this. And then I just see what it suggests. And then I go with it, you know. See what I mean? <laughs> so I'm just playing with shapes here. I don't know where it's going or you know what it suggests. And sometimes it's good to do this. It's really, I think it's a really cool mental exercise, you know. And just, just um, do studies and and have fun. So I'll, I'll do a couple here for you guys so you can see how I play around with it. some useful tips from this that you can apply to your own work um, and understand that it's important to get comfortable with creating abstract shapes you know if you are the type to be very exact and very precise about everything this may be very uncomfortable this will definitely take you out of your comfort zone and that is a good thing you know it will make you feel uh, like you're out of control and and that's that's fine, okay? Because it keeps things loose, it keeps things gestural, it keeps things uh, somewhat abstract in certain ways, but the thing is you have to trust what you're doing. You have to let go enough to be able to refine certain abilities. And it's a paradox, but it's very true. Like the more you let go and stop being too controlling, the more you're refining certain uh, subconscious aspects of drawing. There are certain aspects of drawing that you just have to let lead you, I think to really mature to a certain level and uh, it, in the beginning it's, it's generally tough to do that and with a brush pen it forces you otherwise you know you can use a um, a marker that has a broad tip you can use a pen that and if you're more comfortable then you can also do the line drawing you know and then go over it and shading certain areas like for example say for example you did some you know gesture drawings like this it may be more comfortable for you to do drawings like this and then go in afterwards with the uh, brush pen or a large tip marker and then start filling in areas like for example um, say I uh, okay see this it's like a guy is celebrating his graduation right you know the graduation gown is normally black so I mean st I can go in and, um, and play with it here start filling it in see but I'm, I'm still making sure that I leave don't see I, how I filled that in but I wouldn't do that for the rest you know certain areas especially where the creases are you leave those white because that's what you normally see on black fabric see that and it's important that's why I said it's always important to study life because you know this this doesn't just come natural to me okay so it, it may seem that way that's from studying how fabric behaves under light certain types of fabric all right so that way I can anticipate and try to uh, simulate how I think fabric would actually look and respond in light okay and that's from observation so the more you observe life after a while you're able to simulate it you see what I mean and I leave certain areas in white how you leave those areas is just it's just play you know and then see if it captures a feeling you want and then you leave it all right and that's pretty much it so you may be more comfortable doing the line drawings and then blocking in with the um, the marker afterwards or you may do it like this where you may do it you may not have as much control as with a pen but you can still use in those uh, areas of shadow and um, and local value so 
just like I said, in certain areas, like here, I'm indicating local value. In uh, certain areas here, it's shadow. See, like under the hat, um, the arm, you know, the object, and so on. Here, this little scarf-like uh, accessory around the neck, I'm making that having a different local value from the, the top, which is a lighter value here. And also, um, I'm indicating some light and shadow in there as well. So the more you look at life, look at, look at uh, people around you, especially when they're in bright light, and look at how the shadows are formed, and sometimes just draw the shape of those shadows, and the object itself will start con being conveyed. See like here, all I did was just draw shadow shapes, and you saw a face. You know, because I'm thinking of the planes, and how they generally block or capture light. You know, in the light, the, the eyes here are receding in the eye socket, so they generally create a shadow, especially if bright light is shining from above. Same thing with the base of the nose. The upper lip is facing down, so it generally catches light, catches shadow, um, or it doesn't catch light. And the lower lip is facing up generally, so it more catches light. And then under the lower lip, you'll see the shadow. And that's what I'm thinking about as I'm going along. But I'm not being very exact. If I were to zoom in, you see these shapes, you see how grotesque these shapes look. See that? They don't look anything. They don't look pretty. You know, look at that. See that? Very rough. Very rough. But once you start zooming out, look at this one. Looks like some raggedy lines. But once you zoom out, that's when it starts to take effect and you Oh, you 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 enjoy the overall feel of everything. See, so um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and um, you know have some fun with this.